Hi, everyone. So today, I'm going to be talking about duplex sequencing, and in particular, introducing our new method for duplex Bayes calling. So first of all, what is duplex sequencing? So duplex here is referring to double-stranded DNA. This cartoon shows a piece of double-stranded DNA, and in our sample preparation, both ends of the DNA have an adapter ligated with a motor on the five prime end. So in duplex sequencing, we obtain a sequencing signal from both simplex strands of the same individual DNA molecule, so two reads from the same molecule. So we could treat these as two individual reads and call it a day, but we know that they come from the same molecule and therefore should represent the same sequence of nucleotides, um, not including things like modifications that might be different, but I won't get into that today. So what we can do instead is duplex base calling, where we incorporate information from both of the signals to produce one sequence output, one base call. And when we do this, we find that there's a massive improvement in raw read accuracy over base calling the individual signals by themselves. So I'm talking about an order of magnitude reduction in error rate, bringing read accuracies up to Q30, or 99.9%. So this is a huge improvement. How does duplex sequencing actually happen on the flow cell, though? So here's an illustration of one way in which it can happen. I'm showing the same piece of DNA floating around the flow cell, and we have here the nanopore and the membrane. So by chance, one of the ends of the DNA molecule will encounter the pore first, and one strand will start sequencing through. That first strand we call the template strand. And as it sequences through the pore, it's unzipping from its complement strand, uh, the other strand shown here in red. So as the template strand finishes sequencing through the pore, um, that leaves the five prime end of the complement strand in close proximity to the pore. Um, and therefore, with some likelihood, the complement strand will then follow immediately after the template strand through the same pore. So we detect this in the sequencing output as a pair of reads transiting one after the other through the same pore with similar sequence lengths and complementary bases. And this we call a duplex pair. Now, as you can imagine, there's a variety of factors that affect the rate at which this happens, and therefore the yield of duplex data. Um, but I'm not going to get into that today. There'll be other talks um, throughout the day today that will talk more about duplex rates. I'm going to focus on the base calling inference. So first, let's get a bit of intuition on why duplex sequencing produces such gains in accuracy. Um, one factor is simply that two measurements of the same molecule help to reduce random errors due to statistical noise. Um, that's pretty straightforward. But there's a second effect where the reverse complement strand, because it has different bases and because it moves through the pore in the opposite direction, really does contain orthogonal information different than two copies of the template strand would be. So let's take a brief look at this in some real uh, data. So here I'm showing um, a small snippet of a signal squiggle in the thick black line. And this is a template strand, so I'm showing time here going from left to right. I'm also showing the output of the base caller, so you can see the bases annotated above, as well as the segmentation information. So those thin vertical lines divide up the bits of signal that correspond to each base, according to the base caller. So now I'm showing you here the corresponding region from the complement strand. So it's shown the same way, but in the complement strand, time here is shown moving from right to left. Um, it's a bit difficult to see that these are actually the same bit of sequence, so here I'm showing explicitly the alignment of those two signals, and I've colored A and T bases in shades of red, and G and C in shades of blue. So hopefully you can see these sequences do indeed correspond to each other, except at that one base that I've marked in red, where there's an A in the template strand and a C in the complement strand. So this is a disagreement between those two base calls. And if we look a bit at the region around there, we see that the template strand has mostly A and G bases, which show relatively little differentiation in their signal, whereas the complement strand has T and C bases. And so this gives the base caller more information to make the decision on the complement strand. Indeed, we find that in this case, the complement strand was correct. When we align the sequence to a reference, we see that the, the sequence there should be a C. So hopefully this gives you a sense of why the template and the complement contain um, complementary information that work together synergistically to reduce the error rate. So now let's dive into duplex base calling. So my main goal today is to introduce our new method called stereo duplex. But for context, I'm going to briefly introduce two other methods that one could use. The first is the previous method that's been available, and then a, a simple conceptual approach. 
So first of all, if you've done duplex-based calling in Guppy, for example, this is the method that you've used. We call it pair decoding. So if we think about a base caller, like a normal simplex-based caller model, we can think about it in two pieces. There's a neural network piece that encodes the signal into features, and then a decoder that translates those features into the most likely output sequence. In pair decoding, both signals run through the neural network independently of each other. But then we use a decoder algorithm that jointly decodes both sets of features into one output sequence. And this algorithm comes from this recent paper in genome biology. This can be an extremely accurate method, especially when using our most accurate neural networks, but the decoding step is very computationally expensive. And that makes duplex-based calling up to five times slower or more than simplex-based calling. So that approach doesn't scale very well. So let's take a step back and think about a simpler approach, where we're going to base call both strands by themselves and then work entirely in sequence space or base space. So I'm showing here the output of those two individual base calls. We have our sequences and our per base quality scores or Q scores. So I've also performed a reverse complement operation on the complement sequence so that we can then align these two sequences together. We can then use a simple heuristic algorithm to step through the sequence and at each base choose between template and complement according to their quality scores to produce one output sequence. So this method is extremely simple, it's transparent in what it's doing, and it can be very fast, in part because it's working in sequence space, which is very compressed relative to signal space. But unfortunately, that means we've discarded a lot of the information that was present in that original signal, in both signals. And so therefore, there's some limitations in the accuracy you can achieve with base space methods. So this brings me to stereo, which is gonna combine both accuracy and speed. So overall, the structure is a bit similar to the base space method, where we start out by performing a first stage base call on the two strands individually. But then we're gonna do a second round of base calling with another base caller model that operates on both signals together. Because this model receives two channels of signal information, we nicknamed it the stereo base caller. In addition, we're also gonna feed in as input all of the other information that we obtained from the first round base call. This is both sequences and both sets of quality scores. Now, just like we did this reverse complement to align the sequences to each other, we're also gonna do some pre-processing to align the signals to each other before feeding into the base caller. In particular, we use that segmentation information from the first round base call to do this signal alignment. So because the stereo base caller receives such rich input information, um, it can be very small and therefore very fast. So for context, it's about the size of a fast base caller model, which is much smaller than the typical hack or sup base caller models we'd use. In addition, it's extremely robust to different kinds of input. What I mean by that is we've trained one stereo base caller model that could accept input data from either of our two speed conditions, 400 or 260 basis per second, and it can receive input base calls either from the hack or the sub model. Any of those combinations fed through the stereo base caller will produce significant accuracy improvements. Speaking of accuracy, what does it look like? So here I'm showing some representative example of some native human data uh, base called with the sub model in the first stage. So the gray histogram shows the simplex quality scores and then blue are those same reads rebase called with duplex. So again, this is the order of magnitude improvement that I was mentioning, moving us from Q20 or 99% accuracies to Q30 or 99.9%. And importantly, this improvement in accuracy is consistent across different conditions as well as across read lengths. So this is a different flow cell, similar conditions, where I'm showing again the duplex reads in blue compared to their simplex equivalents in gray. And we see that this 10 Q point improvement consists all the way up to hundreds of kilobases. So there's no trade-off here of accuracy for read length. So what about speed? So again, the stereo process consists of two stages, the first stage uh, simplex round and then the stereo round. So if the stereo uh, stage is as fast as simplex, you essentially get it for free. And indeed, that is the case with the sub model. If you choose sub as the first stage base call, duplex runs fast enough to keep up and therefore it's free. For a hack, it doesn't quite keep up yet, but we have performance improvements in mind, and the entire process run with a hack simplex model is still faster 
than doing simplex based calling with the sub model. So if you want to try this out today, you can. We have a stereo duplex, an initial first version available in Dorado. And the design of Dorado, like Mike mentioned, enabled us to bring this from a research proof of concept to a product you can use in less than a month. Now, right now, there's one additional precursor step you have to take, which is to generate a file of candidate read ID pairs, this pairs.txt file. So our suggested approach right now is to run an initial fast base call in Dorado, and then to generate a pairs file using duplex tools, um, this package that we have available. But very soon, we hope to incorporate this entire pairing process within Dorado. So there'll be one simple command to take you from pod5 files and your choice of simplex model to duplex base calls. We also anticipate future speed and memory uh, performance improvements to come with stereo, so stay tuned for that. With that, thanks for your attention.